Hello, everybody. This is Christian here. Um, something came up, came up for me, so I have to uh, actually uh, run right now. But um, just to give you a very quick update, I've summarized the current state of the release 4.6 work in this comment. I just uh, pasted the link to it in the chat. Uh, so that should be all open issues where we have right now. Um, unfortunately, it's still taking its time to get the backports in. Uh, so we can't release just yet. And there's one open issue uh, we have to still figure out with re uh, with regards to systemd resolve D um, and uh, that being active in, in Fedora 33, which we're now using. Uh, so there's still some ongoing work on that. The rest are really just back parts um, that have to go in. Um, so that's it for me. I'm, I'm going to have to drop right now. Um, yeah, thank you all. and. Have a great meeting. Bye. Yep. You too. See you. So it looks like Charo is the chair then. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We can do whatever we want today. <laughs> <laughs> the only only relevant update I've got is that um, there's a new version of Code Ready Containers that I pushed up to the Fedora site where we're hosting the OKD code ready containers. Uh, and it doesn't require a pull secret anymore at all. So now when you when you run the CRC start, it will just start. It's not going to prompt you to paste in a pull secret, uh, real fake or otherwise. And obviously, as soon as we cut a 4.6 release, We'll cut a 4.6 release of our code ready containers too, but. I saw in the, in the chat, hey Joseph, um, I'm not sure how quickly those issues will be closed. Um, I know one of the things that that I think we're waiting on is is Vadim is is out on PTO, um, and I think he's the one that would close some of those and then cut the release. So we might literally be waiting for Vadim to get back from vacation. <clears throat> okay, but isn't the localhost issue still open? Uh, Vadim was saying that was a blocker, uh, that Fedora was uh, changing localhost to Fedora or something like that. Uh, and I guess that was maybe that was on the uh, the CoreOS group. Could be. I, I don't. If that were the case, why would we not be able to just fix that? Objecting. Well, it's it's apparently a Fedora thing, you know. The, so it's a it's a upstream issue. Yeah, that I haven't looked at that particular issue, so I don't have any. Oh, let's see where was it? See if I can find it. Yeah, the only issues the only issues I see are the ones in the state that. Christian just dropped. I think all of those are just really waiting on a cherry pick. I don't think we're waiting on yeah. any actual fixes. Maybe the Etsy all.conf. Fixed IP addresses. <clears throat> but unless somebody else has something, I'm I'm going to drop as well, so I can actually eat my lunch before my next meeting. <laughs> Um, hey, uh, my name is John Fortin. I want to uh, introduce myself. Um, hey, John. So yeah. sort of uh, 
taken the dive into OpenShift 4, we've been a OKD 3. Dot, probably 6 through 11 uh, shop for about three years now, and we're starting to look at OKD 4. Um, got to test 4.5 cluster running and playing with it. But, uh, you know, since I'm using, you know, you know, open source stuff, I kind of want to get involved a little bit more than I had been in the past since uh, I have a little bit more time now. Um, so kind of wanted to get an idea of, you know, where to get started with you guys um, and, and what to do. I mean, you know, there's always, uh, well, you can do documentation and stuff, but I'm really more into the testing and implementation and trying to, to figure out what's going on type of thing. I've, you know, I've got a couple of open uh, tracking issues going on and stuff and, and starting to try to help out with some um, installation issues, you know, as I can. But um, like I said, I just kind of want to get involved a little bit more and, and figure out, you know, where to go forward from from here. Yeah. Um, what what kind of environment are you guys running on? Are you are you running? Um, you know, what what's your infrastructure like? So we're running vSphere um, IPI. Um, okay. So my my test cluster is uh, three masters and three uh, worker nodes. Um, had lots of fun over the last month or so trying to basically figure out you know, the little idiosyncrasies of doing the installations and stuff. Um, I think that the minimum requirements may be a, a hair low for open, for a OKD 4.5. Um, ran into issues where like worker nodes wouldn't start or only one would start, the other two wouldn't start and would run out of resources. You know, start the second worker and then it would fix itself. So, you know, it ran into a bunch of idiosyncrasies there. You know, also things where they're you know, trying to get Ignite files for the masters and, and the workers and getting timeouts from, you know, this or that. From our point of view, that seems to be related more to the VMware utilization. Once we moved things around, um, response time dropped from 30 to 60 seconds to five to 10 seconds and everything installed. Um, so those are the kind of things that we're kind of working through, and, and like I said, I've kind of opened up, you know, one or two, well, I guess one right now, installation um, ticket, and you know, with a uh, shoot, what's his name, Victor, Vadim. Yeah, uh, hold on. <laughs> I was just looking at it and. I pasted the link to the GitHub repository of OKD in the chat. Yeah, Vadim, I'm sorry. Yeah, Vadim. So he and I, you know, have talked a few times and stuff. Uh, so, like I said, you know, I kind of want to get started and, and help out where I can and also, you know, help with testing and stuff because only it helps me get better at it, especially since 4. Dot is so different than, you know, than the 3. Dot versions. Um, yes, it, yes, it is. Operators are, are one of those things that are still sort of baffling the back of my mind. But, you know, I've gotten things to work. I got Rook Ceph to work, you know, so I've you know, got, you know, Ceph working on my backend storage. Um, so that's been good. But, you know, that uh, one of the things I've been working on today was ingress. Um, so it looks like the, the base HA proxy supports some ingress stuff, but not great. It looks like 4.6 is going to be better. Um, but part of me is wondering whether I'm, you know, looking at, you know, better off looking at, a third-party ingress controller rather than the default HE proxy controller. Um, those are the kind of things I'm I'm working through. Yeah, yeah, because you like, like use a Envoy. Uh, Envoy uh, or even something like you know the 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 newest you know HA you know HA ingress controllers and stuff. Uh, HA proxy ingress controllers. So those are, you know, we're not ready to go into production with 4.5 or 4.6 yet. We're still doing a lot of learnings. Um, and I'm not I'm not comfortable going to production with it at this point, but um, yeah, well, I, that's I, that's I, why I'm here. Yeah, the 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 way you've started is really the way to to get involved. Joseph posted the link, but it sounds like if you're opening issues, you've already got that that link to our page on GitHub. Really, yes. I, I would, but I would say is you know there's a lot of other um, vSphere users. Um, I'd, I'd do a couple of things. One, you know, monitor the issues and feel free to add comments and suggestions mm -hmm. to people who are having problems. Um, two, continue opening issues. And and three, um, share your experiences. If, right. You know, if, if, you've got a, if you've got a GitHub um, page of your own, mm -hmm. you know, share some of your experiences 
um, with, with the other folks. And, and this is, this is a normal biweekly meeting. Um, mm -hmm. this week and last week, or this meeting and the last one have been a little bit truncated, um, partly because of holiday schedules, partly yep. because of, but, but I will say this, this group is, is pretty regular that this, this meeting here on, on biweekly Tuesdays can have anywhere from, from a dozen to 25, 30 people on it. So there is a core group of people, um, mm -hmm. Bruce and Joseph and Neil and there's Neil. Speaking of, yeah, no, like my notification didn't go off, so I didn't realize it. And then another meeting overlapped and then I was looking at my calendar just like, wait, I feel like I should be doing something right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. D Diane, Vadim, and Christian, all three blew us off today, so. <laughs> yeah. Who's the guy with the guitars um, in the background? Oh, that, oh that's That's, um, that's huh? you. That's Charo. Charo oh, okay. Know. Yeah, I, I watched one of these the other day, and I saw all the, all the guitars in the background. I was like, all right, there's a dude after my own heart. Yeah. <laughs> Charo just has an exciting setup at home. Yeah, I like it. Um, I have a question, though. Um, I saw somebody mention something about the Slack channel for OpenShift. Um, I tried to join the Slack channel, and I got like into a circular thing where it said you had to have an email to get a to get a uh, um, to an, to get an invite, but it was Slack is horrible. Slack is horrible. Yeah, it was basically horrible. impossible to get a request or an Slack. invite. Huh? Can we just do Matrix or something like? It's really, uh, really irritating and yes. really frustrating. Don't, don't change a running system. <laughs> <laughs> Almost a running system, at um, least. Let me see. Is there a way from Eddie's? That... As far as I know, yeah. Diane is the only administrator of the OpenShift Commons Slack group, and the Kubernetes group is... She's the only one from the Red Hat side with administrative access to grant people invites into the into the Slack channel. Yeah, yeah, because there there's no way to request an invite <laughs> that I could no, find. No, there isn't. You have to ask. You have to know Diane and ask her first. <laughs> and this really, is, I never yes. have had to do that. I was she, uh, she, there. She pre-populated the OKD working group up front in the very beginning. That's why. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So, like with. I, this is one of those things where it's like we are supposed to be an open group where people can come freely to us and stuff, but we're on a platform that's actually literally designed to be closed off to the world. Like this makes no sense at all. And yes, I get it. Nobody likes IRC. We have a better option now. Can we use that? Oh, Fedora <laughs> is, uh -oh. Fedora is actually that. going to be getting a matrix server. They're planning on pay so there was a um, there was a discussion a few days ago and it's seemingly looking like what's going to happen is that there will um, the Fedora server uh, there will be a FedoraProject.org server and I'm pretty sure Charo did not hear any of that so that was probably a bad plan. Uh, UPS um, um, UPS man just pulled up and the dog. Had a conniption. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think everybody out. goes through that. <laughs> yep. I had to let him out so he could go bark at, at his favorite UPS guy. <laughs> so, Charo, what I was saying before you, you let your dog go bark at the UPS guy, um, the uh, indications are good that Fedora will be getting a Matrix home server and we will be rehoming all of the IRC channels for Fedora onto there. That might also be a good opportunity for us to add a matrix channel, a matrix room for OpenShift and OKD stuff, and start bringing people in as that's the as the open default platform for people to collaborate with us. We yeah. can probably have the matrix room bridged into the Kubernetes Slack for the Kubernetes community, but I I'm really uncomfortable with the fact that we we have been promoting um, Slack this way because like. It adds a burden to to Diane, among other things, and it's just not a good platform if you're promoting open source and open standards and an open infrastructure thing. Like, it's literally the antithesis of it. It it can be a pain in the butt, that's for sure. That too.
Also, I'm just getting real tired of Slack just pinging me all the time about everything. <laughs> Slackbot is your friend. Hey, um. Hey, um. Oh, let me let me go back to John for a second. In terms of right now, we have Slack, and that's the tool that folks are using. So, yes. John, if you go to the Kubernetes.slack.com and try to sign in, are you able to sign in in general into the Kubernetes no. Slack? No. It, it says if you're a ask if you're a member, and I say no, so then I put in my try put in my email address, but it wants a invite Kubernetes. Uh, hold on, let me let me actually go to it. Yes, that's confusing. Yeah, it, it was. It was. Well, that's Slack by design. <laughs> Slack yeah. is not yeah. made for communities, it's made for companies. Right. Yeah, so I get join Kubernetes on Slack, and the, then it says continue with Google, tried that. But it also says, uh, or that's your email, but it's your email at get an invite at slack.kubernetes. blah, blah, blah. Um, so none of that works. So when I try to go in with Google, it says that I'm not a member. When I try to get an invite, I don't have an email with the get an invite at Slack, that Kubernetes, uh, whatever. Yeah, did, though, that's just a thing from... to tell you to go to slack.kates.io. Yeah, go there, it'll from? try to generate you an invite. About a quarter of the time it will fail, but most of the time it works. Yeah, try that. Where was that? Slack.kates.io. It's in the chat. Oh, let me look. Because I took the link from the from the um, OKD.io and it brought me to that page. Oh, so let's see. We might need to change. We might need. To. And if you have problems setting up OKD 4.5, um, paste your questions there, and we will help you. You are not the first one. This is literally the reason I hate Slack. Okay. All right. That was much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Welcome. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, let's see how that works. I'll check that later. Okay. Um, but yeah, that other page was, like I said, it was it was an infinite loop. There was it's no way to actually generate a request. It's been broken for about a year now. It's, <laughs> that page has been broken for about a year now. Um, I believe Diane tried to get someone to take a look at fixing it because I believe that's run by the OSPO team, but uh, uh, nothing's happened. And so here we are. Well, hopefully that'll work, and I can and I can jump in a little bit more. Like I said, uh, I want to help. You know, it, what I found is that helping people also helps me um, learn a lot more too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so, that's why we're all here. It keeps my brain active. <laughs> yes. With this whole thing, what I else? need a, I need an active brain. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, with everything else that's going on, there's got to be something to do. <laughs> So maybe it might be helpful while it's fresh in our heads to do a debrief of last Friday. Does anything stand out for folks that were there Friday? Does anything stand out in your mind from the um, BOF uh, uh, event? I was there. There was a handful of other folks. Anything stand oh, yeah. out? Anything that, you, that you're thinking it that it helped It kept kicking me out. It kept kicking me out when I tried to join the BOF. kept saying I wasn't signed up and didn't have, uh, didn't have the, the right conference pass. So at some point I decided to give up. I think that was specifically they applied a Neil filter to it and Oh okay. <laughs> well that's fine. I didn't need to be there anyway. KubeCon is a boring event. Uh actually the Birds of a Feather was the only KubeCon event that I went to this year. <laughs> I went to a couple, but like a lot of the events I tried to go into despite the fact I had like a full pass. It kept saying I didn't have the right pass to actually join them. And so I was like, after a certain point, I was like, all right, clearly this isn't going to work. And I don't need to spend my day like hitting a broken platform. So I kind of tuned out most of KubeCon because of that, which was unfortunate because that was the first KubeCon I'd ever been to. Been to. Uh, and, and that didn't go so well. So I think one of the things that stuck out in my mind is that it seems like um, in a lot of discussions and also in a lot of the videos, the question comes up repeatedly, the relationship between RCOS, FCOS, and OpenShift, and uh, or OCP and OKD. It might be helpful in the documentation to actually 
write out something um, for the OKD website or for somewhere near the recipes or something like that so that we can always just point people to a document yeah. that says, hey, here's the relationship. Yeah, and, and, and actually I think, I'll, I'll try and remember to dig it out. I'm pretty sure we've got some old slides um, like a year ago where we were talking about exactly that. It, it goes back to some of the early conversations that we all had arguing about whether um, OKD should be truly upstream of, of that was OCD. Neil arguing, really, yeah, yes. but yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, yeah, wow, well, I'm exactly. glad you remembered, Jamie. I think we, <laughs> we wrote uh, we wrote documentation, Vadim and I uh, wrote something on OpenShift um, OKD in yes. one of the readme's about that. Yes, Maybe that's Maybe that helps. We, when, we should probably pull some of that into OKD.io. I've also, the, the whole OKD.io website is written in this cryptic Ruby yes. language. Uh, that, <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I would rather just write straight HTML. Yeah, than... please. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about that website too, if, for what it's worth. Like, it it's not even like normal Jekyll, it's got some real funky stuff in it that just makes it real hard. Yeah. Yeah, and it took me like... two hours to get it uh, compiled. Yes, Reverse engineer it's... everything. <laughs> and, and then I updated the Big Sur, and that completely destroyed all compatibility with the Ruby version. So now I can't do any work on it at all. Um, you should be using please. Linux. You know this by now, Charo. Hey, just get I a have... Linux laptop. Hey, hey, when, for, for a uh, Linux to, to Mac OS, I have like a 20 to 1 ratio of Linux operating systems to Mac OS. The, to be the fair, Mac I'm OS... in the same bucket. I have one MacBook computer, and then all the rest of them are, yeah. are Linux machines. But, yeah. but like, I... if this is one of those problems, just, just throw a Linux VM on there and call no, it a day. <laughs> no, the right way to do this is to, is to divorce ourselves from this crappy Ruby thing and put together a subcommittee of the working group to rewrite OKD.io. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, by the way, yeah. the, the, Use something the... normal like Python. And that would be a holiday project. Crap. Yeah. By the way, search on docs.okd.io is broken. Yeah, that's been for me for a while now. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> you know, we do have student way. projects. Uh, like you can get a, st a team of students uh, full time for five weeks uh, for I think a four hundred dollar administration fee at BCIT. Uh, and that. like that sort of rewrite it in some modern technology would be a typical project. That sounds like a good plan. Can we get like five hundred dollars to 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 do that? <laughs> if we, I mean, if we, we did. Each, the, we usually have a budget of zero. Well, it's, it's 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 in Canadian, which means twenty five cents American. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. Right. Yeah. The, we we could, I could throw a quarter. There we go. <laughs> Di Not quite that bad, but Diane's working on leading her Canadian citizenship. We'll we'll just let her. Yeah, Bruce, you ought to reach out to Diane. <laughs> well, if I if I knew that she had that project, uh, I would, because we're. Uh, well, I mean, I, you're dealing with I, students, so you know there's no warranty, right? So you right. might get something, you might not get something, but usually you get something good. We're, not, just not always. We're, we're open source, right? So we know what no warranty right. means. Um, but right. Right. Exactly. no warranty is the name of the game here. Reach <laughs> out to Diane because she might actually be able to handle something like that as a community. I mean, because her job is community. Um, right. She might be able to handle something like that as sort of a Red Hat community project and um, get Red Hat to foot the bill. So reach out to her because that um, I, I was kind of half joking, but that's actually not a bad idea. Yeah, it's not the main problem, I think, uh, but um, maybe after 4.6, after the release, um, we could uh, do something with that idea. Yeah, yeah. but isn't and to rewrite like, it? Yeah. The last I looked at the OKD docs, they were full of uh, you know RH costs. References. Uh, so I, I think it, I think 
I think if you're talking about confusion, that's a good place to start too. Is that there's, uh, you know, like I haven't gone through and, uh, you know, put in a, a a ticket on it, but just because there's so many of them and, you know, life is short anyway, right? I've just learned to ignore those. <laughs> Yeah. You know, so so this is a it, it's actually the reverse effect that you find in a lot of the other Red Hat products. Like if you go looking in um, JBoss documentation for you know JBoss EAP, you'll find tons of references to Wildfly, right? Which, mm -hmm. in in my opinion, is the way it should be because JBoss EAP is just a base distribution of of Wildfly. OpenShift still is suffering, you know, with the four dot release. Well, I mean, even in the in the later three dot releases, it it is like a um, it's almost a downstream, right? Yep. It, it's it's we not upstream it. at all. The Fedora Core OS is the only upstream piece of OKD. Um, now, I think once we get four dot six cut. We, we will be on the exact same code base um, of all of the core operators for OpenShift code. The one piece that will still have its own FCOS branch a little while is the installer. Yes. So, so once we get 4.6 cut, there really is an opportunity for us to, to get in front of releases because really, OKD 4.6 should have dropped before the supported OCP. Um, right. Hopefully, with 4.6 going into whatever 5.0 is going to be, we'll have an opportunity to. Well, leaving a 5.0, what the heck is going to justify a 5.0? Because uh, eventually we're going to run out of numbers, right? <laughs> That's not how this works. You know. <laughs> I mean, we still have projects that have zero point one point like fifty, you know, like fifty or something. Right. Like that's that's a thing. Yeah, but we're trying to pretend we're adults here. <laughs> oh, oh, that's the new. I'm thing. not. <laughs> that's no fun. Charlie, Char, do you know <laughs> something about uh, the progress? Um, for the community operators uh, that I used also in uh, Red Hat OpenShift uh, because yeah. there was a, a restructure, uh, refactoring uh, situation a few weeks ago. Um, Christian told me that this was finished, the new package format for uh, the operator. And uh, yeah, I, uh, can you st tell us something about the state of the operators, the service mesh, pipeline, Tecton? Yeah, so for, for every one of those, we, we're at the mercy of that specific operator team to, to start conforming to that new format. So the good news there is, is that as they start doing that, we'll start seeing those operators showing up in, in Operator Hub. Um, so we won't have to wait for a big bang where they all get done and then suddenly, ah, oh, we got all the operators. The bad news there is that any stragglers will have to keep pressure on, on those individual teams to get those so, operators into place. I saw a post about that at some point. I, I don't understand what the difference is between the OpenShift operator hub, you know, for the commercial product and using those for OKD. I saw something about a licensing issue with that, but aren't most of those operators open source? Every one of them is open source. Yeah, they're they're all open source. The main difference is that the the Red Hat maintained operator hub, not to be confused with the community uh, operator hub, is is behind a a, a paywall, a subscription based paywall. So mm -hmm. really the the, the 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 in fact you can go you can go get the operator from any of the of, of the open source projects like Rook Ceph, right? Yeah, yeah, I've done that. Right. So if you've installed the Rook Ceph operator that you got from the GitHub page, you've effectively installed the exact same operator. The difference is you didn't you didn't get to go to Operator Hub and click on the subscription and click mm -hmm. install. 
So it it really is more of a free as in beer thing. It, it's mm-hmm. uh, right. It, it it's freely available. It, it it's just not as easy. Mm-hmm. Is is to to get those operators also in the unconstrained mm-hmm. Quay.io or or the the CNCF hosted um, operator. And, hub. and Jara, a question we always have is uh, if they, the code base is um, really exact the same for the community versions and also the uh, Red Hat versions because there are some hot fixes. I think uh, Red uh, OpenShift users will get first before the community can get them, or is also are also the hot fixes uh, being pushed uh, to the public uh, repos? Yeah, so everything, everything that Red Hat does, um, all of the hot fixes actually show up in GitHub first. So, so okay. the, people that, the people that are paying Red Hat money, um, they're not getting fixes before the community gets them. What they're actually getting is fixes that have gone through Red Hat's um, testing QA and validation. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, okay. So if you, you know, if you follow, if you follow the issues, like say you come across an issue in your Kubert operator, right, and um, and you need a fix for it. If you're monitoring the issues on GitHub, as soon as those pull requests hit, and the CI system builds off of those pull requests, um, again, it's it's the whole free as in beer thing. You can grab those and and get mm-hmm. them in. I used to do that back in in the day with JBoss. When I was um, enterprise architect for Advanced Auto Parts, um, we were actually running community JBoss instead of the subscription-based product because the subscription-based product was so far behind that it didn't it didn't support the newer JWE features that we were trying to implement. So, so we mm-hmm. for years we ran community before we we started paying um, Red Hat subscriptions for EAP. And, and mm-hmm. that's exactly what I did. I, I would just monitor the upstream, and when a fix came in for a problem we were having, um, I would just grab the code, build it, and and shove it in. Mm-hmm. Okay. So would that be, you know, the operator um, store? I mean, is that a is that a a valid place to start poking and prodding to add some? help to or something I one because I, I need to learn more about operators anyway but um it, you know one learning how to build them and how to install them you know would probably be a good thing before I start getting deep down into the code and creating my own yep. you should start with the operator SDK <laughs> we, we did the same and it's uh, very it's not hard to to create your own operator mm-hmm. with that SDK it's it's much more easier than uh, two years ago where people told us yeah. that this is the Absolutely greatest king size uh, thing you can do on Kubernetes. It's it's rather easy now. Yeah. Uh, if you do it with Operator SDK. Well, I remember watching videos from about a year and a half ago or two years watching, and I'm like, what no, the no, hell no. is what the no, hell no. is this? I don't you know, people are actually doing this because it was so so complex in terms of what you had to do for you know all the configuration files and everything. I'm like, whoa. No, no, you have to go with the operator SDK. We wrote, uh, I think, three or four operators on our own yeah. in, the, in the last months, and it's uh, very, very feasible to use this SDK. For, okay, everybody, go. everybody behave now. Diane just joined us. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yep, I, I did it again two times in a row. Wrong time zone in my calendar. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, we were just talking about operators and videos. I'm going to post in the chat this video. That's a really good one for um, operators. Uh, Jay walks you through the whole process. So folks that are interested, um, Jay and Chris Short do a great conversation about uh, the operator SDK. Mm -hmm. Cool. The nice thing about the operator SDK is also that, oops, that that, uh, that you can uh, um, very very quickly uh, peek into existing operators, and you will find um, everywhere the exact same structure. Mm-hmm. 
to learn what what the operator does. That's a, a, a big, great benefit of this operator SDK. And all these our yeah. all Go operators ahead, are moved with that. Mm -hmm. But the community operators that we're talking about, are, are they written mostly with the SDK or are they written with all the other tools I've seen to be out there? SDK, I, I, almost everything I saw um, that is related to uh, OpenShift was written with the operator SDK. You see that if you go into, if you see a package directory, package controller, and there is a Go file with, uh, with a function called reconcile, then it's uh, created with the operator SDK because, uh, and there you can find what it does. Yeah, okay. that's that's the beauty of the operator SDK. We have also reverse engineered some uh, OpenShift operators where the documentation was a little bit behind uh, what it's already doing. And yeah, I've had to go into code for a couple of things in OpenShift to try to figure out what in the world is going on, like what version we're actually running and looking at what Git. Yeah, sure. You know, what, what actual Git um, uh, commit, you know, they, that they built it with so I can go look at the right source code. Uh, I did that today with the HA, yeah. uh, with the HA proxy um, uh, thingy. Because I was like, there's no documentation to it, you know, as to what you can do with it, you know, what annotations. There, there was nothing that I could find. I had to go into yeah. the code. That's but very it's, uh, annoying. <laughs> same with, with lots of the operators that you have to look into the code. But the the cool thing is it's written in Go, not in C++. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you won't have a very hard time in understanding what they do. Yeah. Now, uh, on top of that, there there are a couple of frameworks um, that so, so that you to create an operator, you don't have to. The SDK, those frameworks are built on the SDK, so they're doing it for you. Um, you can build operators with um, Ansible and with Helm mm -hmm. charts. Um, they are, they're obviously a, a subset of the full capabilities that, sure. that you can get with the operator um, SDK. But you will stumble across some operators out there that have been, been built either with Ansible or with Helm. All right, guys. Um, I'm gonna this. I'm gonna apologize um, for um, getting my time zones wrong again. This is two times in a row. I'm going to officially move it in my calendar so it shows up in the right place. Um, and I put the link in for um, signing up and letting us know that you're here. Um, and I have uh, invited a couple of folks in the, um, the last time, Juliana and Mike, um, from the uh, Advanced Cluster Management team to join us to uh, talk to us a little bit about using that in the context of OKD. And I'm not sure, because since I'm coming in late, whether I don't think they got to talk at all, or did they introduce themselves even? And if they want to unmute themselves maybe and put themselves on camera? So hey, can... No, we we haven't um, present yet. No. Um, just give me two minutes. I'm going to set it up. I closed everything. I thought, I thought the meeting was canceled. And then I'm going to present. Okay. Sorry about that. Cool. So that that's great. So I apologize, folks, and I am now officially changing my time zones on the calendar. Um, yeah, I just did that this morning. Vadim is still on PTO, and and yeah. Christian had to had to go to something else. Did we get? So my my question to everybody, um, since I'm late, is did um, I know Vadim is on PTO? So I I'm taking it the 4.6 didn't get out the door. No. no, the Christian posted a list of everything that's uh, holding it up. So okay. there's a link actually in the chat. All right, cool. So I think because I joined late in the chat, I'm not sure I get that link. Let me just see. There I just go. reposted it. Thank you. So let's take a look at that. And I'm sure you all discussed everything on this list and anything we could do to make it disappear. But is it all de dependent on um, Vadim coming back? We are. There's a couple of PRs that we're waiting to get accepted um, by their respective teams, and then um, Vadim or Christian to cherry pick those into the MCO. Okay. Uh, and there's potentially one um, Fedora Core OS 33 issue okay. that we're waiting on resolution for. Okay. And I'm just. You muted, Neil. Is that the one where we have the wrong IP table, so everything just breaks when it tries to configure networking? Yeah. 
That sounds right. All right. Because, yeah, I, someone reported that on Twitter. It was like, oh, yeah, OpenShift is incompatible with itself because Fedora CoreOS uh, ships the IP tables legacy and OKD ex and OpenShift expects uh, IP tables NFT and everything is busted. It's like, oh, well, great. More fun quirks caused by RPM OS tree. Is that here in this list anywhere? That any mention? Of I that? don't know because this is the first time I'm seeing the list. Okay, so the link is in there. So if we need to add a comment, there yeah, was okay. also one. There was also a problem with the localhost and Fedora user. I don't know because it's uh, also open, not closed. But it's not in the list of uh, Christian. Is there um, an issue somewhere um, that you can add in and to this and? It's in the it's in this uh, on this page a little oh. bit above. Oh, it's our okay. Yeah, if it's already in there, we can yeah. add a comment. Uh, yeah. But you might ping it with a comment to see if um, if that is still an issue. Yeah. They were talking, uh, I think, today about that. If you follow if you follow the chain of the issue, then uh, someone was. Uh, um, what, what saying number? sorry for something in a, in a different ticket. What was what was the number on that issue? There. Oof. Um, it's um, Christian. Uh, go, go down, please. Okay. Tell, tell me when to stop, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, CoreOS uh, six forty nine. When you're talking about? It's it's uh, something about network manager, local host, Fedora. It's from Christian. It's a short one from Christian on this page. It's this one here. This one here. Okay. Yeah, it's a, I think this one is uh, the problem. Oh, looks like there's a temporary fix for that. Okay. That that may be why it's not in the the final list down toward the bottom. Is mm -hmm. that 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 number twenty one sixty there is probably the stop gap. I just threw a link in uh, into the ticket. I just added a comment at the very bottom about the uh, Fedora CoreOS issue about it having the wrong IP tables implementation uh, that has been tracked in the Fedora CoreOS tracker. But we need to we need to add it to our list to make sure that uh, they fix it with OKD46 going out uh, so that OKD46 doesn't do unexpected things and get broken. I'm, I'm doing these thumbs up, not because I like them, but because then I know where where I was when I was talking about it. So, yes, um, right. Yeah, so. Uh, to be clear, the reason why this is a problem is because RHEL 8 and RHEL CoreOS use the um, NFT implementation of IP tables, and so all the software has been bit, written around it, and the legacy IP tables uh, that doesn't use NFT uh, is doesn't support enough features for everything to work. So some clusters will come up, but others won't. Okay. So I've seen some issues with IP. Uh, some people have complained about IPI deployments failing because of this, whereas okay. UPI deployments all work because we don't do any network configuration um, in a UPI setup. So is it um, the wrong IP tables, or is it that for Fedora CoreOS is using the legacy IP tables imitate? No, no, no. It's that Fedora CoreOS is accidentally not using the latest IP tables. They're using the wrong implementation. Uh, so so it's, they're... A it's a regression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a regression. Not so intended it... to do that. Yeah. Okay, so whose who's side is uh, the fence is that on? Is that something the Fedora CoreOS folks have to? That's the Fedora CoreOS side has to fix. Yeah, we, we could probably ping Dusty with that one to find out status. Can we? Um... Sounds good. Is it possible? I just wanted to make sure to bring that up so that y'all know that that is actually a problem that people have been reporting. Yeah, okay. yeah, we could put an at Dusty Mabe on that one. If you if you want to talk about ACM, um, here's the GitHub link to the the community um, GitHub pages, the upstream. I, I think that's all the pieces that make up ACM. Okay, so I'm going to stop share, sharing for a minute and um, get Mike um, to introduce himself and. Um, uh, the open cluster management folks um, are here, otherwise known as ACM. Um, and so I thought that 
we've been trying to get them on the stage for the past couple of meetings. So if we can use the last maybe five, 10 minutes that we have. That's perfect. Thank you, Diane. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Mike Yang and I'm a software engineer with Wet Hat, focusing on the product called Advanced Cluster Management for Kubernetes for, for ACM. Um, today I want to present to the OKD community what we're doing in the upstream project called the Open Cluster Management. So there's a lot to talk about. I'm probably condensing uh, an hour talk into a quick five to ten minutes overview and quick demonstration. Um, so let's get started. So what is um, open cluster management? In Red Hat, we have the enterprise offering of advanced cluster management for Kubernetes and OCM. Open cluster management is the open source backbone of that project. The project is really about Kubernetes and how to manage multiple Kubernetes clusters in a consistent way. So multi-cloud obviously is becoming more and more of a reality today, and we want open cluster management to be the go-to solution on solving some of the challenges that multi-cloud management raises. So how does this all ties in with OKD? Well, through the operator hub, users can install our OCM solution, cluster management operators, and um, multi-cluster multi subscription operator uh, onto the control plane cluster which we call the hub cluster. And then the OCM agent clusterlet can be installed on t onto the clusters that they want to manage, which we call, which we label the managed cluster. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how you can use the hub cluster to deploy application across your managed clusters. Mike, so can, I ask, can I ask yep. a quick question? Is that um, did that come from the operator hub.io or from the Red Hat operator hub? Operator hub.io. These are upstreams already, and you can install them with OKD and not just. Wow, cool. That's awesome. I want yeah. to play with this. Um, <laughs> one one other question before you before you continue on that. Um, is there a website that talks about the community uh, cluster open cluster management? thing like I just quickly popped into GitHub and I couldn't okay. find a, a website for it. Right. We we're working on launching a website. We have the we have the community here that talks about all the goals um that we're trying to accomplish. And then we also have um we're working on the web launching our website that's gonna be uh launched real soon and then which will give like um overview of Basically, we phrase some of the um, community mission statements that we have here. So, Sounds good. Any, any more questions before I continue with a quick application deployment demo? Roll on. So, I have the um, OKD cluster here on the left representing the hub cluster, and then I have the managed cluster on the right representing the um, managed cluster. So I, in the interest of time, I already register the managed cluster to the hub cluster. So now I can do things on the hub and then it will propagate down to the managed cluster. So the first thing I'm gonna do is a quick, it's a quick um, deploying this managed work. A managed work is a CRD that we define so we can push workload down from the hub to the manage. So, and then to show the managed clusters, we also have a CRD that well, we define as well, which shows, hey, this managed cluster is connected to the hub. So when I apply this managed this work, and then on the on the uh, managed cluster side, I'll get the and in this workload, I'm just deploying a config, a quick config, a small config map. So I'll see the uh, config map shows up. And so this is this is a really quick example. And now I'm gonna show up a little bit more complicated scenarios where we want to deploy a, a Helm chart from the hub. And then, um, and then to have it propagate down to the managed cluster. So this uses uh, application lifecycle management, which is another open source product under the open cluster management uh, umbrella. 
So it uses a subscription model. So we define where we want this, um, where this subscription, where we want this subscription, app application subscription to be placed at. And then once it determines that where it's gonna place that, and then it's gonna push the uh, subscription into the managed side. And what, what it does in this particular subscription is I'm trying to install a Ingress app with the version 1.4, uh, 1.2. So in each of the managed clusters on the hub, if it's registered, it, you will have a um, you'll have a namespace. So in this case, it'll be in this case it'll be a cluster one. So when I look at the when I look at the um, status of the subscription, the app application subscription. So we can see that it's placed onto the status say, oh, I'm, I found the placement rule is uh, this placement rule. Will, sorry, there's so much, there's so much details. I'm, I'm skipping some of the details. So placement rule this, uh, is placing where the application should be deployed into which clusters. So in this case, it found the cluster one, which now says it's propagated. So if I, if I go on the manage side, it will deploy the same subscription, but this subscription is a standalone subscription per each managed cluster. And then we can see that, oh, the English is now uh, deployed on the managed clusters. So that was a quick demo um, concluded. Uh, and we're really seeking feedback from the community to help shape what goes on in open cluster management. For example, um, this was application lifecycle, but there's also a cluster lifecycle. And how do you we deal with the policy and configuration across multiple cluster? How do you deal with um, the cluster health? And um, all these four areas are the open cluster management is trying to address. So please take a look and join the conversation in the uh, community repo. Um, and um, We'd love to get your direct involvement or bring your organization and get more directly involved. We'd love to have that uh, type of participation. And um, that's it for the quick overview. <laughs> yeah, that was very quick and thank you. Can you pop over, can you share the screen just for, um, for the record and go over to operatorhub.io and show everybody which one of the operators it is? Yep, so, give me a so. couple of questions. There's a lot of naming conventions in this. Um, the product side of this is ACM. The, the open source side is open cluster ma management. And, and I think we've named, or you've named the... Um, so um, does it also come with, uh, with the web UI? Because I, I remember that there was a web UI. Is it also included? Right, so part of the process of uh, transforming the ACM to the OCM is we, we're gonna slowly open up open source our entire stack so right now we only have the foundation pieces the api that are open so for now the ui is not open yet but is it uh, will it also be transformed mike no um wh what do you mean by transform it'll be open and then you'll get you'll get the almost like the exact same feature set similar to okd to ocp Ah, okay, so you mean the web UI will also be uh, open in the next uh, next time? Um, yes, okay. we're working on it. We'll, okay, we'll, great. We'll open yeah, it may area. take us a while. Um, Thank we're you. doing it one of the we're doing the components one by one, and once we get all the components open, then we'll we'll do the UI yeah. as well. Yeah, That's great, Julia. Kind of, Thank you. Thanks a lot. It's, it's kind of like um, um, Core OS. ACM was a proprietary product um, under the under the IBM umbrella, uh, and it is it has been open sourced. But they're still going through the process of getting all the code out there, and so that's that that's why that's why you see some pieces of it that that find the code for yet. But it's uh, great to, to that we can expect it in the future. That's yeah. good news.
I'm really looking forward to this. This is going to be exciting. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Oh, yeah. All right. So Hopefully. there, and I know um, when I talked to Juliana and, and Mike earlier, they're also looking for people who want to uh, participate in their community as well. So um, that's going to be um, an interesting group of folks to, to work with, too. I think what I'd love to see is, um, is to do, once it gets a little bit further along, um, maybe we could record a video of it running on OKD and do, do some demos and do a briefing on it again and whatever, you know, whatever you need, really, is we're here. So, and, uh, yeah, and it, it, guys, it's intended to run on a, on a, a management cluster, um, which could easily be a single node cluster on the OKD. But, so you don't need to stand up a, another full OpenShift cluster, or if you want HA, you could do a, you know, a three node master worker cluster. See, I think this is this is where things get very interesting because um, literally one of the things that I've been talking to to some of my coworkers has been we want to provide a way to do um, something along the lines of an OKD as a service for developers to to spin up a cluster, a tiny tiny cluster for the purposes of doing um, microservice oriented development and. The challenge right now is that it's such a pain in the butt to actually orchestrate the setup, deployment, and destruction of of, of Kubernetes clusters, never mind OpenShift clusters. Uh, and so this is something that I'm I'm really excited about personally. And like it once as you guys get further along in this process, it'd be great if you came back and gave us a, the full presentation that you intended to give. Rather than this sadly shortchanged one that we unfortunately had this time around. Now that, right, now that okay. Diane's got to write, you guys can come back uh, in two weeks and. <laughs> I, I'm here for the next hour. I now have a free hour. So. Uh, <laughs> Wait, you get a free hour? <laughs> yeah, except, except I'm working on my boss's presentation on the side. So, um, uh, yeah, it's a it's a free hour. Except I'm multitasking, so it really isn't free. So. Okay. But like, yeah. if you could, if you folks could make a brief, like uh, I know Diane, you've in the past scheduled um, where they did a recording and and made a brief, and then you just straight up uploaded it to YouTube yeah, if to you wanna, show that off. If Mike and Juliana, I don't know what your schedules are right now, but if you want to stay on and do a deep, I can record it. We can just record it as part of this, um, and I don't know what your schedules look like. Are we are we showing the Juliana? Are we showing the full ACM or just the OCM, the open no, part? We need to show the the parts that are just open for now. Yeah. Um, and, and then um, as we gradually open it up, we can share more of the details of the components that are open. Um, um, yeah, I'm I'm not sure if I want to. Yeah. Do, so do we, yeah. We'll, do we, show, <laughs> do we, yeah show? we could do is we can create we can put together a video. Um, Mike, we can. Uh, we our community hasn't been created yet. We're gradual. Um, you get a sneak preview <laughs> because we haven't started yet. Um, That's okay. So, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. So, I'm pretty sure all of the rest of us are excited too. Yeah. So I I think that the other thing that I would say is if you do put that video together and do a write up about de you know deploying the operator on OpenShift, we have um, a recipes section of our okd.io site and that's where I would embed the video into a, there and link to whatever write up you guys did. So if you want to record something and make a, a readme file, you know, specific to okd um, deployments, that would be a great thing. So if, like, if you go to okd.io and you'll see in the nav bar, uh, a very limited set, shall we say, of recipes so far, because uh, I'm still working on everybody twisting arms. Um, yeah, somebody needs to work on that. Yeah, I don't know. Some, I, cre I created an organization. I, I just I haven't done anything with it since. Yeah. So all right. Well, um, that does bring us to the end of the hour. And again, I apologize for everybody for my time zone issues. Again, um, it is now in my calendar at the right time. And so in two weeks' time, we will meet again. And is there anybody else on the call who? Um, I know I have the community. We've still got a few people here, and I'm sure some of you are ready to jump. Um, is there anything that we should have talked about from the um, 
projects page. I'm just going to look at that really quickly for a second. Um, oh, I know the. Uh, did anyone come from the Red Hat Actions team? No. Are, is that the the Power the, 64? No, that is the um, Git, GitHub Actions, um, sort of the GitOps side of things. There's a, a, a movement afoot inside of Red Hat and with collaboration with GitHub. Um, and I think they'll, I'll try and get them to come to the next meeting if they're not here today. Um, they, I don't think they were here. There was someone from the, uh, from the IBM Red Hat partner power team, but okay. they disappeared a little bit ago. Okay. Yeah, that was uh, Alexis. Yeah, and then the other thing was the key lime stuff. So yeah, so I think that, yeah, as long as I didn't blow off anybody from GitHub, I'm happy. Um, I don't mind blowing all of you guys off and- um, Wow. Um, that, That's yeah. okay. we, had, we had fun. Because because I knew I knew um, Charo or or Vadim or someone would show up and have my back. So anyways, um, so next time in two weeks time will be the date. So you are still working into the holiday season. So that would be the eighth of um, of December. And I actually may ask Charo to actually host this or um, Vadim or that because okay. I. I'm in an all day meeting on the 8th, 9th, and 10th. And on the 10th, uh, which is actually. Who, who is so Japan. terrible that they scroll you away into a three day, all day meeting? Oh, there's two in, there's two at the same time. So I'm in. That's two, even worse. Two of the said, there's a staff meeting for three days, and then there's a um, pragmatic marketing product management training thing for at the same time. And. On the 10th of December, but in Japanese time, um, which is actually the night of the 9th of December, um, or the night of something like that, some weird time, we're, do, we're hosting an OpenShift Commons gathering in all Japanese. So if you have any Japanese friends, um, uh, it will be it'll be a fun adventure for me hosting a, an all Japanese event. So yeah, so that, that's, that's that cool. week. So I may not be here for the next one. So um, I will. I may sneak in, but we'll see. So, Charo, you may be on tap for that, too. So Let us know what special guests we're expecting, and we'll cover yeah. it. Yeah, I will uh, reach out. It's a, a gentleman. His name is um, John Bonahan um, from GitHub, and I will ping him again. He's going to do a briefing for me anyways on January 4th on using um, GitHub Actions with OpenShift. And this is sort of like a, um, yeah, I'm pragmatic enough. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be cranky on that day. Um, and he's going to do something on January 4th, and they asked to come in because I think it, it's something that I want to see if it's anything of interest for the OKT group, and that, that would be another thing that would be a nice recipe to have as well. So um, there, there you go. So, All right, everybody, we've run over um, seven minutes, um, which seems like the shortest meeting I've ever had with you guys. So um, thanks again. <laughs> <laughs> no. Take care, and we'll we'll see you soon enough. All right. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Mike and Juliana. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. Six is coming soon. We'll make a big hullabaloo about that. Can't wait. Yay. 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 Get Vivdeen back. Take care, guys. Take care.